Here we are, punters, part two. And uh, after last time we had DK, I only told a cracking story about uh, Frank, the Frank Hudson Frank story. Hudson, which was 20, just, you know, 20 people got in touch with me. I really enjoyed that. So thanks for everyone who got in touch. And uh, yeah, it was a, it's a great story. So uh, you probably haven't heard anything I'll tell you over no, once. No, I've seen it on YouTube. Yeah, I downloaded story. the show. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was a million dollar mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nothing happened to Frank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. thought I'd come up with one that uh, has stuck with me from my very young days as a punter, and I hope uh, everyone enjoys it and uh, has resonates with them to some degree of a past experience. So it's you know it's a long time ago, so I'm you know, try I'm, and like I said, a lot of it stuck with me, but some of the details might be out marginally. But I, I think it was about 1990. I'm pretty sure I was 21. I was working with a, a guy that had greyhounds. He was like 20 years older than me. Pat Chapman, his name was, and he's um, I was friendly with his son John. They've, they still race greyhounds in New South Wales, I believe. And um, so I, I was helping Pat out a bit with his greyhounds. And um, so I'll cut, I'll cut the, a long story as short as I can. So we're going to Mudgee to a non-tab meeting with three dogs. And one of them is um, you know, a former fast greyhound that sort of trained right off, lost the form completely, had a little break. And it, Pat tried everything to try and see if he could figure out what was wrong with her. And eventually, she had a problem in the back, had a chiropractic work yeah, done. Nice got her back flying. Right, so she's in about race four or five on the day, in box one. We think she's just a complete moron. Right. Then we've got another dog in about three races later. We think it's a really good winning chance. And the other one we're just taking with us just for the trip just, right. just for the just for the ride. So I've known this has been coming for like several months. I've been saving the every penny I can. Pat's been getting the bank together. Off we go. And we've got Pat's dad with us as well. So Pat's putting it in the boxes, John's catching it, and me and his dad are doing the betting. It's about four or five bookies there. Four or five bookies, yeah. non-tab. Non-tab. Mudgy non-tab dogs. Yeah. Grass track. Mudgy dogs. Yeah, grass. Yeah, grass track, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think from memory I had 3,000, I mean, if Pat's had 3,000 to get on this dog. Put on it with yeah. four bookies. Yeah. So we're sort of, you know, waiting as long as we can, and we've we got signals, he's over that side, I'm over this side. And anyway, we start betting at um, somewhere between three to one and seven to two. Um, we get all the money on. She runs like even money with some of the bookies five to four with mm -hmm. the others and we're stoked. We got we probably averaged two yeah, five yeah, to two, 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 five to two, something like that. Okay. And uh, she goes in the boxes. It's only a not a bit of three three hundred and twenty meter they start in the back straight there at Mundy one turn. You know, short, very short race and she's never missed a start in her life. She's just a machine when she's going. Boxes come up, she comes up with the boxes, misses at four lengths. Wow. Rusty. See, now, see. Just something happened, not, not, to this day, don't know. Anyway, she's got through the field, flown home, and she's only got beaten half a length. But we are completely Sick. in a coma. Oh, Sick. And like, Sick. The mood all the way to, all the way there, the three hours, the drive there, which is one of the coup parts, the mood was so buoyant, because we just couldn't see her getting beaten. Like, we were just up and about. Picking it up off the ground. Yeah, oh, <laughs> God, I'm kidding. So, now, by the time, Pat and John get back and you know, another race is run or whatever else, we, we, we have a bit of a, we're just shaking our heads. Anyway, the other one can win, we'll, we'll, you know, get out on we'll have our last on the end and see how we go. So the race before the other one's um, in, there's some mix up after the line where they've got like a light, a red light and a green light, so the green means clear the putt. And one of the stewards has accidentally hit it and the bookies have started paying out. Then they put the red light back up and said, no, there's a problem, we're, taking, we're making one more, uh, one grand non-runner. And the bookies are blowing up absolutely the like they should imagine, because I think it was the favorite. And they're just going crazy. And meanwhile, our dogs on, on the track going to the boxes next, and they're not putting up any prices for the next race. Right. I'm sitting there, we've got, we've got a thousand to try and have on, yeah, yeah. We're, we're hoping to get seven or two or something. And they're going to the boxes, and, like, there's only one bookie with a board up at all, and he's got every dog's leaving money basically. <laughs> and I'm like, what? A, this is <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> Shambles. So then the like the, the steward comes in and is yelling at all the bookmakers, and they're just, just screaming at each other. And all they're going, what are we going to do here? And like, and like just as they're about to go in the boxes, one of them's maybe adjusted his board to about a, you know 180 percent or something, and bets two to one. So you know, I asked him for a bet, and I think he bet me like 300 at the two to one. And the others still, there was just, no, there was just no, nothing you could do. Anyway, home it goes. Oh, of course. Go home it goes. Of course it does. Which is good. Please, look one. 
Pat comes back thinking he's out all sweet oh. for the wag up, and we're sitting in the bar there and going, Pat, this, I'm trying to explain to him what happened here, but he just couldn't believe it. I mean, there we are with 600. And I'm just, I'm just shaking our heads. And then, anyway, so the last one goes to the box. But this, this stage, we just completely, you know, just didn't even look at the betting, nothing. Anyway, they get to the first team, half the field falls over, our dog gets a fly, and that home it goes and wins it about 10 to 1, and we haven't had a bean on it. Oh, no. So we've, at least he's collected some prize money. That Got something there. Anyway, the drive back to Sydney, there's hardly a word spoken. Well, we've gone to Mudgee with three dogs. Two of them have won. One's been beaten half a length after it missed the start four legs. And we just can't talk. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just awful. Oh, the punt. It's just brutal. So anyway, three weeks later, me and Pat are just going down the ball. It's just me and him. And he's, uh, he's, he's rustled up a, a young bloke that he knew on course to catch the dog. And um, we're in a race. There's two good dogs in the race. And, this, this particular dog was only having its second start for Pat. We, we thought it, she'd run a good race, but we didn't think she'd win. We thought she'd run a race. And we, now this, we're driving down there, we're completely cast, so it's very quiet on the way down there. No buoyancy. I think I've put together $25 to have on it. Pat probably got, and I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if I had 100 or 200 on it, to be honest, but the horse, the dog was called Tarniki. I remember that, because uh, I'll just never forget this night. Anyway, so, they're the two, two good dogs in the race are like, uh, you know, six to four and nine to four or something. And they, they back the nine to four chance in the five. The other one gets out to two to one, then they back it. So then virtually they get close to the boxes and they're reaching for every other runner. You know? And one of them puts up 25 to one out of them. So I go over them. 125s, you know, probably a, probably a donation, but, um, you know, just watch, watching the race with no optimism at all, just expecting her to, you know, maybe run a nice third or something. She, as usual, she jumps really well, straight to the front, runs a good race, the other two get in each other's way, and home she goes, wins by length. So, something. Yeah, something. Take the two and a half in the bar with Pat, and we get, we're like, oh, well, you know, can you believe I, I you know, went to the Mudgee the other week, and, you know, here we are now, we're back to 25 to one winner. <laughs> and uh, so we, we're standing there, and we, we'd taken her down there the week before for a steward's trial, and she jumped to the front of the steward's trial, went really well to the home, then there's a strong dog behind her, and he just went straight past her and put seven on her, like he was a 600 meter dog, you know. And he hadn't, he hadn't raced for a while, he was he had a few months off. Anyway, so we're in the bar sort of feeling pretty good and I'm just flicking through. But because we were so cast, I never looked at the fields all night. Because we now got some money, I look at, you know, race eight. That dog's in here. The moccasin in box one of the 608. <laughs> I still remember this is 1990. I can still remember the name of that dog. You have 2,500 in box. We've got 20, oh. What are we going to do now? <laughs> so we go in between the two of us, 500 each way on the moccasin. Jump straight behind the leader, stalks the turn, races away, wins it by five. For price? So, ten to one. Oh! <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Chuck the gambling gods, eh? Uh, Amazing. The gambling gods. So, yeah, we, we're driving home from Ball Eye. Like, we just, we, we couldn't, there was, we went out. Pockets there, full. Yeah. There was no chance of us going to work the next day. No. <laughs> yeah, you got and to enjoy the, the, the whole, the nature of that month just never left me, you know. Like, we went to, I'd say for months, we went to Mudgee, so yeah. full of optimism. Come home, could hardly talk, and then we went to Bulleye three weeks later with nothing, and we've come home with thousands. It was just hilarious. Uh, 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 That's the pun for story, you. Yeah, no, story. I've got one similar to that, Potts. I owned a grain called Fair Sentence, won a Melbourne Cup, and it's back in the same period, 88, 89, 90. And Caesar Costa trained it down at Devon Meadows and had five, six starts and bred the dog. And he had some successful greyhounds previously. And then one night down at Olympic Park, and I know Graham Bait pretty well. And I saw him in the dungeon back in the day when you're downstairs at Olympic Park. And I just said, Would you be interested in training this greyhound? I said, The guy just has tried everything, can't get it going, it's got untapped ability. Do you mind having a look? He said, Yeah, I'll take it. So about two weeks later, he says, You better come down and see this dog try it. It was a Tuesday afternoon, we're training on Tuesday night. I said, What time? He said, About two o'clock. I said, Yeah, I'll flip down, I'll come back, I'll get back in time for training. So a trials, a trial with Hay Diddy. Hay Diddy was probably the market greyhound at the time. Anyway, he trialled in 26-22. Fair sentence comes out after it and trials 26-18. Now, you can't break 26 seconds back then yep. at Geelong. So it's in Friday night, isn't it? We're playing Essendon the next day at Waverley. Team meeting Matthews calls at five o'clock. So back in those days, it was daily double races two and four. First league of the body was two, three, four, five. So it was different to the day scenario. And I'm looking at the team meeting and I'm thinking, oh, geez, how Oh, I'm uh, traffic. I might get here in time. Matthew is going. Any questions? Nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> so we soon, Paul Hawke was a part owner of it. One of my teammates come from Sydney. I've got three other mates in it from Ballarat. 
So we're heading down. Bobby Newton, Bert Newton's brother. He, Bob Newton was a um, athletics trainer who trained a lot of store gift winners. So he loved the Greyhounds. So he's jumped in the front seat. I mean, he's probably in his 70s at this stage. And I'm a lunatic behind the car, knowing I'm against the clock. I reckon I got down in 35 minutes. I'm like, I'm going to put a pass on. <laughs> you you broke the track record? Broke the track record. <laughs> it was like the straight six. I was going from Collingwood, Victoria Park, to where the team meet was down at That's just the store where it is in the dog track. At least you don't track. have to go yeah, into town. Yeah, unless no, you yeah, barrel yeah, strike Absolutely. There. So 100 mile an hour we got there. Anyway, there's Ray Swanee and there's Frank Hudson and Daniel Crimmins. And, yeah, back in those uh, days. Yeah, yeah, and Tom Murphy and Frank Murphy on concession. So I've got a bloke at Harold Park. They put up five to two, and I've known what she's tried. I'm like, you can't break 26. Anyway, she's lobbed in front. She's hit, uh, he's lobbed straight in front. He's won by 10. He's ran 25 92. Wow. Absolutely walked in five to two to five to two on, right? So we've unloaded. So that's okay. So we go to the footy the next day. And Tom Fletcher is a good mate of Peter Dacos's, and he's a fanatical dog punter. And he's sitting in the dugout, and Matthew's come down after our quarter one meeting. And, I'm sitting next to Dave's. Tommy Fletcher's come down in the dugout, being his best mate, comes down, talks greyhounds. Geez, your dog was good last night. Matthews is two seats up, isn't he? <laughs> what price did you get? <laughs> what about a winner by 10 lengths? And I'm going like this. <laughs> and I'm kicking him. And Matthews looks around like that, and I'm thinking, oh, God, if I don't get a kick today, I'm in trouble. <laughs> we get beat. Oh. I've had eight possessions. Hawkey's had five after the two game team meeting. Right. All I heard was about this dirty, rotten greyhound. <laughs> what price you's got? What it won by? What time it ran? No wonder your mind wasn't on, on footing. He said both of you have earned the right to be a part of us next week, but geez, you got some paying obligations back to your teammate. I didn't give a stuff about how we went. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was all about the shush game. Yeah, uh, no, we feel that. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right, boys, that, that, that's good. I reckon good. Good. Hopefully the punters will enjoy that. Talk some footy. Yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a big week, isn't it? Uh, yeah, let's yeah, do that. Let's do that.